Halo is an ever-expanding universe, spread across a multitude of media, and it can be easy to get confused about where to start. Today, let's take a look at all the Halo media out there, what it covers, and perhaps what order to experience it in. Warning, major spoilers ahead, I won't be holding back. You can skip to the end of this video if you want for a complete list of all current Halo media, listed first by release date, then in chronological order. There is also a Google Doc in the description. I should note that this list only includes purchasable media, meaning stuff you can get on Amazon or at a local store. This does not include online videos and articles. That list would be mind-boggling to put together. Halo, The Fall of Reach The story of Halo begins with the best-selling book, Fall of Reach. This was the public's first experience with Halo, setting the groundwork to an ever-expanding media franchise. The book starts in the year 2517 and primarily covers the origins of the Spartan II program and the backstory of the most well-known character in Halo, John 117, the Master Chief. From his recruitment at the age of six, to his early missions, all the way to the fall of the planet Reach, the UNSC's military powerhouse, second only to Earth. Along with the Chief's backstory, we also get solid character development on other major characters in the universe, both for the games and other media. These include Dr. Catherine Halsey, head of the Spartan II program, Captain Jacob Keyes, captain of the Pillar of Autumn, and Spartans Fred 104, Kelly 087, and Linda 058. Halo Combat Evolved, the game that started it all. Halo CE follows the adventures of the Master Chief after landing on a mysterious ring world called Halo. Along with other human survivors, he takes on the Covenant while trying to discover the mystery behind Halo. Unfortunately, that secret has a dark and terrible answer, an all-consuming parasite known as the Flood. Worse, the Halo itself is a weapon that wipes out all sentient life in order to stop the Flood from spreading. The Chief and Cortana fight off the Flood, Covenant, and Forerunner machines in an attempt to destroy the Ring and the Flood and an entire Covenant armada. Halo The Flood an often overlooked and, in my opinion, underrated book, The Flood retells the events of Halo CE, but with the added perspective of the Covenant and other human survivors on the ring. Halo First Strike Acting as a bridge between Halo CE and Halo 2, First Strike explains how Sergeant Johnson and John 117 got back to Earth, how many Spartans, along with Dr. Halsey, got off the planet Reach after its destruction, and is full of great action and memorable moments. Halo 2. What need I say? Halo 2 is the story of the invasion of Earth and the downfall of the Covenant. Unlike the first game, Halo 2 lets us play as two characters, switching between the Master Chief and a new character, the Arbiter. As the Chief continues to fight the Covenant on Earth, he eventually finds his way to another Halo ring and more Flood. The Arbiter, meanwhile, seeks to start the Great Journey, the ultimate goal of the Covenant by activating the Halo rings. Along the way, he discovers a dark plot to betray his race, the Sangheili. The game ends with humanity and the Sangheili teaming up against what remains of the Covenant. Released with the game's limited edition was a transcript of in-universe conversations, appropriately called Conversations from the Universe. The Halo Graphic Novel Halo's first foray into comics, this compilation would set the standard for all video game comics to come. Made up of four stories, each story is self-contained but really helps flesh out the universe. The first story, Last Voyage of the Infinite Secor, tells the backstory of the Spec Ops Commander from Halo 2 and 3, Urtas Vadumi. During the events of Halo CE, Urtas is sent by his fleet commander, the future Arbiter, Del Vadumi, to investigate a Covenant ship called the Infinite Secor, which had sent out a distress beacon. His forces find a flood infestation, and through the events, Urtas finds himself the only survivor. It also explains why he's missing his two mandibles. The second story, called Armor Testing, introduces a new Spartan, Maria 062, as she tests out the Mark VI Mjolnir armor that would eventually be used by John 117. The third story, called Breaking Quarantine, illustrates how Sergeant Avery Johnson was able to escape the flood containment facility on Installation 04. The final story is called Second Sunrise Over New Mombasa. The story follows a man who works in Oni's propaganda department, editing war footage to make things look less terrible than they actually are. The story is the first look we get at civilian life in the Halo universe, much of it set right before the Covenant attack on Earth. 
Each story has a unique art style that fits well with the tale being told. It's a great read that changed the way video game comics were made. Halo, Ghosts of Onyx. The final book from Eric Nyland, Fall of Reach and First Strike, this book introduces the Spartan 3 program and the first concept of Forerunner Shield worlds, both becoming important to future Halo stories. The majority of the story takes place during Halo 2, from the invasion of Earth to the Great Schism. We also get to see Blue Team and some insight into the political turmoil within the Covenant and among the Sangheili. There's so much going on in this book that I don't think I could properly sum it up in this video. Suffice it to say, it's well written and a must read. Halo Uprising Halo's second comic adaptation, Uprising takes place between Halo 2 and 3, explaining what the Chief was doing on the Forerunner keyship he boarded at the end of Halo 2, and looking at what was happening on Earth during the invasion. It's not the best received Halo comic, but I still enjoy rereading it now and again. Halo Contact Harvest The first and only novel written by then Halo lead writer Joseph Staten, Contact Harvest tells a bit of the backstory of Sergeant Avery Johnson and gets into the origins of the Human Covenant War. Humanity is the only species that was never offered to join the Covenant, and this is because Three Sun Shayun, the future prophets of truth, mercy, and regret, discovered that the Covenant religion was false, and that humans were the true inheritors of the Forerunner legacy. With this knowledge, they blackmailed their way to power and began a war of extermination against the human race. Halo 3 the end of the original trilogy. Master Chief returns to Earth and, with the help of the Arbiter, works to put an end to the Covenant and the Flood. From Earth, the Chief and the human ship forward unto Dawn, and the Sangheili Separatists follow Truth and the Covenant to the Ark to stop him from activating the Halo Array while putting an end to the Flood. The game ends with both goals being fulfilled, and while the Arbiter makes it back to Earth, the Chief and Cortana find themselves adrift in the aft section of Forward Unto Dawn. Halo, the Cole Protocol. Set early in the Human Covenant War, the Cole Protocol primarily follows the exploits of Spartan Team Grey, a team that strikes at insurrectionist and Covenant targets from deep behind enemy lines. Grey Team is, at the time of the book, investigating a group of human refugees who live in hollowed out asteroids. Unfortunately, they are also trading with Kigyar and in possession of sensitive nav data. The book also features then Lieutenant Jacob Keyes, as he is assigned to investigate this group of refugees. Naturally, he crosses paths with Grey Team and the two help each other out. The book also gives some great backstory on the future Arbiter, Thalvatami, while also showing his rise to power within the Covenant. The book is one of my favorite stories for a number of reasons, so pick it up if you haven't already. Halo Wars The first and only Halo RTS, and the first Halo game that was made by a studio other than Bungie. Fun fact, Halo was originally going to be an RTS. Wars took place 21 years before the events of Halo CE, following the exploits of the human ship, Spirit of Fire, from her battles on Harvest, to the colony of Arcadia, to an unknown Forerunner shield world with a serious flood problem. It could be said that the characters and story are stereotypical and somewhat predictable, but the action is great, the gameplay is solid, and the game is an overall amazing addition to the Halo universe. Included with the limited edition of the game was the graphic novel Halo Wars Genesis, which gives backstory on a number of characters in the game, and was the first to really develop the universe's most famous admiral, Admiral Cole. Halo Helljumper A prequel story to 2009's Halo 3 ODST, Helljumper told the backstory of two characters from the game, Romeo and Dutch. During a battle, the two stumble upon a Covenant dig, discovering a Forerunner AI called the Knowing. The Knowing was tasked with, well, knowing stuff. It collected and archived information. Sadly, due to the threat the Covenant could pose if the knowing fell into their hands, the two ODSTs are forced to destroy it. The story really fleshed out the characters of Romeo and Dutch, and is arguably one of, if not the best, Halo comic. Halo 3 ODST Taking place during the start of Halo 2, the game tells the story of an ODST squad that lands in New Mombasa just as Regret is leaving. You play as The Rookie, and have to search the city for clues as to the fate of your fellow ODSTs. With fun and divisive characters, environments, and Nathan Fillion, the game is absolute fun, and has become my favorite Halo game of all time. Did I mention Nathan Fillion is in it? The Halo Encyclopedia one of 343 Industries' first publications, the encyclopedia was an attempt at a comprehensive guide to the Halo universe. While full of new information, it wasn't very well put together, nor edited, at times taking entire articles straight off Halopedia. 
A second edition was released not long after Halo Reach came out with tons of new and updated information. While an improvement, neither volume lived up to what a Halo encyclopedia should be. Halo Evolutions the first book from 343 Industries, Evolutions is a collection of short stories and poems about the Halo universe. There are some brilliant stories in here, my absolute favorite being The Impossible Life and Possible Death of Preston J. Cole. Really, there's something in here for everyone. Four stories from the book, Midnight in the Heart of Midlothian, The Return, Headhunters, and The Mona Lisa were adapted into motion comics and are available on Halo Waypoint's website. All four are great stories that were brilliantly adapted. Halo Bloodline Introducing a ton of new lore to the Halo universe, Bloodline follows Spartan Team Black, a Black Ops team, as they crash on Line Installation 1-4. Over the course of the comic, they are forced to work with Covenant survivors in order to defeat the installation's monitor and the deadly systems on the Forerunner installation. Another great comic and one of my all-time favorite Halo stories. Halo Legends Representing the first time Halo moved to an animated medium, Halo Legends was a series of short episodes set in the Halo universe. The seven episodes included Origins 1 and 2, the history of the Halo universe from the time of the Forerunner Flood War to the end of Halo 3. Prototype A lone marine, despite orders to destroy it, uses a prototype battlesuit to fend off a Covenant invasion. The Package Dr. Catherine Halsey has been kidnapped by the Covenant, and it's up to five Spartans to save her. This is one of the best received shorts in the entire collection, due in no small part to the badassery of the aforementioned Spartans. The Duel Set long before the Human Covenant War, an Arbiter finds himself doubting the Covenant religion, and is forced to pay for his heresy. Homecoming Delving into the atrocities of the Spartan 2 program, this short primarily follows a Spartan trainee as she escapes from the program and discovers the horrifying truth behind the Spartans. The Babysitter The ODSTs have always had issues with the Spartans, and that really comes through here. Four ODSTs are sent to assassinate a prophet, their mission being led by a Spartan. Odd One Out a joke episode, this short follows the exploits of Spartan 1337 and is entirely non-canon. Halo Legends met with mixed feelings from the Halo community. It seems you either loved it or hated it, and it really came down to your love or dislike of anime. Halo Reach Bungie's final entry into the Halo universe, Reach tells the story of a six-man Spartan team during the final days of the planet Reach, one of humanity's biggest military strongholds, second only to Earth. The game created a lot of controversy among fans, though I would argue it turned what was originally a three-hour battle into a month-long fight for survival. Is it perfect? No. There are glaring plot holes, even with attempts by 343 to fix it, but it's still an exciting game nonetheless. Included with the limited and legendary editions of the game was a copy of Dr. Catherine Halsey's personal journal, along with several extras. The journal expanded on a number of long-standing discrepancies within the Halo universe, while filling in a number of Halo Reach's apparent plot holes. The extras included with the journal also contained dozens of bits of interesting information, such as news printouts, Spartan profiles, and much, much more. Halo, the Forerunner Saga. Three books by sci-fi legend Greg Bear. The Forerunner Saga tells the story of the final years of the Forerunner Flood War. The first book, Cryptum, follows the story of a young forerunner, born stellar, and two humans, Chakas and Riser. The group accidentally awakens an ancient forerunner warrior known as the Didact, and the four endeavor to discover the state of the galaxy, finding that the Flood had arrived and were winning the war against the forerunners. Through the story, the Didact is captured and disappears, Chakas and Riser are taken to a rogue halo ring, and born stellar is imprinted with the Didact's memories, effectively becoming a second Didact. The second book, Primordium, follows Chakas and Riser on the rogue Halo ring as they discover the horrible experiments performed by the Flood and the Forerunner AI, Mendicant Bias. Eventually the two are rescued by a born Stellar, having taken on the title Didact, but Chakas had been severely injured. To save him, the Didact transfers his consciousness into a monitor's body with a device called the Composer. In a twist of fate, Chakas would eventually become 343 Guilty Spark, though his memories of being human had been suppressed. Only after the events of Halo 3 would his memories of being human reawaken. The final book, Salentium, details the final years of Forerunner society. 
Through the events of the book, we discover how the original Didact, now the Ordidact, was corrupted by the Flood and driven to madness as we see in Halo 4. There are also a number of subplots in here, more than I could sum up in this list. Needless to say, it's a must read, and really conveys the desperation of the Forerunners as the galaxy falls to the Flood. Halo, the essential visual guide, a reference guide to the Halo universe and a significant improvement over the Halo encyclopedia. While it may not have as many entries, it does have tons of new information. Halo, the Kilo 5 trilogy. Set in the months following the end of the Human Covenant War, this trilogy follows the exploits of a Black Ops team called Kilo 5, made up of a Spartan 2, a few ODSTs, and a Spartan washout turned Oni agent. While not my favorite series, it is filled with a lot of interesting information. It deals a lot with the consequences of the Spartan 2 program, and sets up a number of characters that would become important in future Halo media, including Jewel Umdama. Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary in HD update of Halo CE, this game also features new terminals that dive into the 100,000 years 343 Guilty Sparks spent, alone, on the Halo ring, and what he was up to while not guiding the Chief through flood-infested libraries. If you're going to pick up Halo CE, pick up this version. It allows you to play everything in classic form, but also includes the aforementioned upgrades. Halo 4, Forward Unto Dawn. While not Halo's first foray into live action, Forward Unto Dawn marks the first live-action Halo series. The series primarily fleshes out the backstory of Thomas Lasky, future captain of the UNSC Infinity. In this series, Lasky is enrolled in a prestigious UNSC Academy, but has doubts about fighting in a war. Worse, the Covenants show up and all hell breaks loose. Luckily, the Master Chief shows up to kick ass. Forward Unto Dawn is a great Halo series with lots of action and great character development. Halo 4 343's first real Halo game, Halo 4 picks up the story of the Master Chief four and a half years after Halo 3. The Chief crash lands on an alien world, kicks bad guy ass, awakens the Didact, kicks more ass, and saves Earth. Sadly, the Chief loses Cortana, she sacrificing herself to save him. In addition to the main campaign, Halo 4 features Spartan Ops, an episodic campaign. Set six months after Halo 4, Spartan 4s and other teams are deployed to Requiem to learn all they can about the Didact and his world. Unfortunately, they are met with resistance by Jewel Umdama and his Covenant forces. The story includes a number of important concepts, including the mysterious Absolute Record and the Janus Key, the latter of which notes the location of every Forerunner artifact. Included with the game's limited edition were a number of extras, including a Spartan 4 briefing packet and handwritten notes from Spartan Gabriel Thorne. Halo Spartan Assault A twin-stick shooter, Spartan Assault is set between Halo 3 and Halo 4, detailing a Covenant faction's attack on the colony of Drathius V. The story features two Spartans, Davis, a new character, and Sarah Palmer from Halo 4. It also features a Forerunner Death Star, so that's pretty cool. Halo Initiation. Billed as the lead into Spartan Assault, the comic details how Sarah Palmer became a Spartan, delving into the beginnings of the Spartan 4 program and the Spartan military branch. Halo 4 The Essential Visual Guide. A reference for Halo 4, this one is filled with tons of new information and little tidbits that really help flesh out Halo 4 and the universe as a whole. If you were to get one Halo reference book, this is it. Halo Escalation. The first ongoing Halo comic, Escalation picks up where Spartan Ops left off and continues to build the Halo universe. Future Halo Media A new book, Halo Broken Circle, is set to release on November 4th, detailing the founding of the Covenant. Halo The Master Chief Collection releases on November 11th, featuring Halos 1, 2, 3, and 4. Halo 2 Anniversary will feature new terminals detailing the Arbiter's past, and the collection will include new cutscenes that tie into Halo 5 Guardians. The live-action series, Halo Nightfall, will also be included, detailing the backstory of Agent Jameson Locke, a playable character in Halo 5. Halo 5 Guardians, the next game in the Reclaimer saga, will release in late 2015.
Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. It means a lot. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and maybe share it around on whatever social media you choose. Your support is greatly appreciated. I cannot stress that enough. Thanks for watching.